Hey guys, in this tutorial we're going to talk about how to use spotlights, point lights, and IES lighting with the iRay Render plugin. Let's jump into it. You'll notice in this scene that our iRay preview is currently black, even when we switch cameras. This is because the scene in iClone is a confined space, and the IBL in iRay will cast shadows while iClones will not. Therefore, our first item of business is to add a spotlight. Let's go to our scene manager and activate our first spotlight. When we do, you'll see a faint glimmer of light appear in the iRay Render preview. If we want the light to be stronger, we can just go to the attributes of that spotlight in iClone and increase the multiplier value. Adjusting the range is pretty straightforward. A smaller range will cause the light to fade out after a shorter distance, while a longer range will do the opposite. Keep in mind that setting a higher range will cause more intense light on items within that range. The angle of your spotlight will narrow or widen the area the spotlight covers as you can see here, while the falloff essentially softens or sharpens the edge of your spotlight. Attenuation is similar to falloff, however it influences the entire spotlight beam. A lower attenuation value will have a slightly more intense beam. You can also press the E hotkey when your spotlight is selected to bring up the rotation gizmo and change the direction of your spotlight. If you want to change the actual physical appearance of your spotlight in the iRay Render window, just select the light you want to change, in this case our spotlight, and then adjust the shape radius. Just like iClone, there's also a multiplier parameter that will increase the intensity of the light in the iRay parameters as well. Adjusting this will only affect the iRay Render preview window. Let's switch cameras to the overhead view and give ourselves a more toned down multiplier value for the iRay multiplier. Next, let's add in another spotlight on the balcony in order to light up the tail of our cargo ship. I'm going to activate this rim light here, which at first is barely noticeable, so let's customize it a bit. Just like before, I'm going to increase the multiplier value in order to create more intensity, and also the range. This light won't be as noticeable in general since it has more of a toned down color and not an intense white. We can complement the iClone multiplier value by again going into the iRay Render settings and increasing the multiplier value there. Again, it slightly illuminates the rear of the cargo ship, but not to the extent that a white spotlight would. If we want a bit more control over our spotlight in the iRay Render plugin, we can also change its shape. Let's change it to a rectangle for now. Once we do this, we can adjust the width and height of the light to give it a larger area, therefore making it brighter. You can use this technique to simulate light coming through a window, and the spotlight attribute can be used to fake window light. You can also change the angle of the iClone spotlight to better match the look that you're going for as well. If we zoom out, you'll be able to see how well it looks like a simulated light coming through a window or a doorway on a sunny day. Let's take a look at point lights next. I'm going to activate this blue colored point light from the scene manager here. Point light settings are a bit different from spotlights in that they don't have angles and fall off. Also, point lights in iClone are mainly used for atmospheric light and don't cast shadows. If you look at the point light from certain angles, it doesn't really look that good, almost like a blue spot of paint on our iRay render. So let's try once more to adjust the shape of the light in our iRay settings to that of a cylinder. That way we can make it seem like a fluorescent tube light. With the cylinder we have similar parameters to the rectangle we saw before. Therefore we can adjust the shape to one that mimics the shape of a cylindrical fluorescent light. The last thing you'll want to do is hide the light in iClone C Manager as well, so that we have the raw light effect without seeing the actual light entity in the iRay Render window. Next, I'm going to reveal a plane on the ground below our ship that is using a glow map for illumination. When I reveal that, then right away it will brighten up the entire scene significantly. We have another iRay tutorial that goes into more detail about the emissive lighting effect, so check that out to learn more. For now, we'll just put this emissive plane below the ground here so that only certain parts shine through the patterns on the floor. You can do a lot of cool things by adjusting light settings and being creative with color, positioning, and all the other parameters as well. Finally, we're going to talk a little bit about IES, or Illuminating Engineering Society Lighting. 
IES uses monochromatic images to dictate all the parameters of both point and spot lights. If you want, you can change the light by loading it manually from the iRay Render Plugin Lighting tab. Notice that once it's loaded, the viewport and icon will not be affected at all. You can also go into the Media tab of your iClone Content Manager to find a number of different IES images. To apply these, you can simply click and drag them to the IES area of the iRay Lighting tab to load it that way as well. This is kind of nice because it allows you to preview the image in the Content Manager so that you can tell what sort of result you're going to have once it's applied. Let's switch over to the spotlight in this scene. As mentioned, IES maps can be used for both point lights and spotlights. Let's load a different one for this spotlight. As with regular lighting methods, you can also change the shape radius and multiplier values to get the desired effect. Finally, you can also adjust the shape of the light itself to make it look like a cylindrical light directed downwards on our object. You can also download a bunch of IES maps simply by Google searching as well. Naturally, we encourage you to donate or pay for them if you have the means, but if not, they're still available to you to use freely at many different sites. Once they're downloaded, all you need to do is click and drag the files from the Explorer either onto the light in the iClone viewport or to the image thumbnail in the iRay Render panel. That's all we're going to cover in this particular tutorial. There's lots more to learn about lighting and atmosphere in the iRay plugin, so make sure you check out our other iRay plugin tutorials on our YouTube channel as well as our forums at forum.reillusion.com. Hope to see you in the next video.